Hi, in this video, I'm going to once again remaster an existing master and use the original master as a reference for when I'm remastering the unmastered mix. So thanks to Peter at Untrue Sounds for letting me use his material for this. So what I'm going to use is the new graphic equalizer that came with the Logic Pro 10.4 update, much like the other two equalizers. And I'm going to basically just Again, use the master as a reference and try and get to a similar sounding place, if not better. Let's first of all have a listen to the original master. I'll bring it in here. Cool, sounds good if I don't say it so myself. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to listen to the unmastered version. So again, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mute, and it will switch the mute over. Again, massive difference in loudness. So I'm going to turn down the reference track so it's at a similar loudness to the unmastered mix and EQ from there. I already did this previously, as you can see on the reference track, I have a gain utility, which is set to minus four dB. So let's just double check that that is roughly the same loudness. Close that. Yeah, so basically the same loudness, but they do sound a bit different and we're gonna tackled that with Logic's new graphic equalizer. So let's switch over to the unmastered version, load the graphic equalizer. So we go to EQ, go to vintage EQ collection, vintage graphic EQ, and here we are. This is modeled on a vintage graphic equalizer that was often found on a classic mixing console. What's cool is that you have different gain stages for each of the 10 bands. So you can apply gain to each of the 10 bands separately, like so. Kind of like on an old graphic equalizer that you might find on a stereo or a hi-fi system. Okay, and from here, I'm going to make some adjustments to the EQ using the bands that are already fixed in place. And then I'm going to experiment with drive to add some saturation, just like I did with the previous videos and see where we end up. Okay, so the default saturation mode for graphic EQ is punchy, which I think is perfect for this type of music. Okay, so I think that the mastered version has a bit more air, so I'm gonna try and replicate that in graphic EQ. Okay, maybe not so much.
So as Thomas explained in one of the previous videos, an EQ is basically a mixing desk for frequency. So try and think of this kind of like a mixing desk where you're trying to adjust the levels of the different instruments. Obviously that's not what's happening here, you are adjusting the frequencies in the mix, but um, it's a good mindset to move forward with when you are EQing in mastering. So if that kick is knocking a bit too hard, I can try and attenuate that. So I turned it up first at that frequency, just to validate that that is the frequency I wanted to turn down. So I turned it up and then turned it down again. As you can hear, when I turn up the drive all the way, the kick drum really distorts. So I'm gonna dial that back a bit. And I'm not really referring to the reference track at the moment because I'm happy with the direction that we're going in with this new one and I'm just going to continue forward for now and refer to it later. When I bypassed it there I noticed the difference in loudness. Um, when, when the EQ is on it's a bit louder so I'm going to turn it down so that I'm making a fair comparison. Let's go over here. Cool, so I'm actually quite happy with that sound. Let's compare it to the reference. The reference is a bit punchier in the low end, but this one, the new master that I'm working on, is just overall more punchy throughout the frequency spectrum and just a bit fuller. Excellent. Now another feature that is actually included in this one and the others which I didn't talk about that much before is the type of phase that the EQ is using. Now you either have linear phase or natural phase. I've spoken about this before but natural phase is what all analog EQ devices use because linear isn't realistically possible in analog EQs. But the difference is any EQ adjustment that you make with an EQ that isn't linear phase, you are disrupting the phase difference. So remember, phase is time between the frequencies. 99% of the time that's not noticeable, it's not really a problem because the, the way that you're affecting the sound is more apparent than the byproduct of it. And to be honest, I just go with what my ears tell me is right. If you use a linear phase, that's not a perfect instrument, especially for music like this, when it's quite transient heavy and the kick drum is very important and stuff like that. Linear phase can introduce pre-ringing, even though all of the phase relationships between the frequencies are the same, it can introduce pre-ringing, um, which can really distort or really muffle the impact of the transients. So I normally go for natural phase, but if I feel that there's a problem or, or it's a really delicate piece of music, maybe like an orchestra or something like that, I might resort to linear phase. But even then, I probably wouldn't use an EQ like this that has saturation and color and stuff like that because that would be a more of a surgical application. Great, so I'm very happy with the EQ sound now. I'm just gonna close that. And I'm gonna go back to the reference track, take notes of the difference in volume, and just do the same as I did with the other EQ videos where I load a gain stage after the EQ. And 
I'm going to leave that there for a minute. Load an adaptive limiter. Zero gain, true peak detection on, optimal look ahead. And then a negative one gain stage at the end of the chain. So that I've always got one dB of true peak headroom. And then increase the gain until we get to roughly the same place. So again, that one was 4 dB. So let's bypass that now. Leave that muted and increase this. Well, what I'll do is I'll slowly increase it to 4 dB. Notice the adjustments in volume that I'm making on my output. As I talked about before, I usually work in a fixed monitoring environment, but I'm trying to make this relatable to you. If you aren't ready to calibrate to a fixed monitoring level, or if you are doing a demo master in headphones or something like that, and you're resorting to using reference tracks, this might be the sort of process that you'd require. So if you are increasing the loudness in your master, you might want to decrease the output on your headphones or your speakers. A, so that you don't get too fatigued, but B, you'd be more aware of the changes that you're making to the sound without it just getting louder and louder and louder. Okay, so now as I've started to get louder, I'm starting to notice problems in the EQ. It's just not sounding as full as the other one. And when I try and approach that loudness, I'm getting distortion and stuff like that. So I need to revise my EQ. So let's have a look further. <laughs> I'm going to turn down the drive because I'm, I'm thinking now it's way too much. And now let's see if that makes a difference when I increase loudness again. Excellent. So in hindsight, the drive wasn't doing me many favors. So I turned it down and then increased a bit more gain. And now I feel like I'm there. It sounds at least as good as the original does. And that was just using the new graphic EQ in Logic Pro 10.4 and some limiting, which when the mixers are reasonably good and they're not rescue missions in the mastering process then you can generally get there quite easily with eqs and limiting and sometimes you have a compressor in there but 
that's really a last resort if I just need an extra push in loudness, which I generally don't need. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.